Hello and welcome to the uh, tutorials for 2x032 Geo3. Uh, I'm hoping to have a lot of these posted before the test next Wednesday so that you all have a chance to study if you want to. Uh, this one is on monopolies uh, working with the Silas postulate. Uh, basically a theory that if everything stays the same sort of gives the maximum or sort of the worst case scenario for the for the entering firm um, and if you can see, say that it's still not a natural monopoly then you can be pretty well convinced that it's probably not a natural monopoly in the um, grand scheme of things. So there's a firm currently operating in a monopoly setting. Uh, their total cost is Q squared minus 20Q plus 200 and demand is P equals 30 minus 1 over 4Q. So I've already done the rearranging for you. Uh, your friend is considering opening a competing business and knows his marginal cost will be Q minus 14, but is unsure of what his fixed costs are. He asks you to help him decide whether or not to open the business. What advice would you give him? Or her, I guess. Uh, the hints are to use the Silas postulate in your answer, obviously, and that the integral of Q minus 14 uh, for all real numbers is 1 over 2 Q squared minus 14q plus c. And that should get you started. So go ahead and pause the video, uh, make an attempt at the problem, and I'll show you what the answer is in a moment. Okay, so we've got natural monopolies, the Silas postulate here. We've got p equals 30 minus q over 4. We've got for the initial monopoly tc equals q squared squared minus 20q plus 200. Okay, so what do we want to do? Well, we need to find marginal revenue, right? So to start off with, we'll start off with total revenue, which is just price times quantity. And if this is all new to you, there's a video on solving a monopoly problem that is also posted that you may find of use. So if I take the derivative of that, I get 30 minus 1 over 2 Q. Okay, and then if I take this marginal cost here, I get 2 Q minus 20. All right, so MC equals MR is our optimality condition. This should all just be very uh, basic review from the last video or from something you already knew. Okay, so that's me just solving the basic monopoly problem. And just for kicks, let's figure out what the monopolist's profit is, right? Revenue minus cost. Right, so that's price of 25 times quantity is the revenue. And we're going to subtract total cost. Okay, so 20 squared minus 20 squared is clearly going to cancel out. Um, so we're just left with 20 times 25 minus 200, which means that profit is, I'm going to grab my calculator here, I don't want to make a mistake, I believe. Yeah, so profit is 300. Okay, Okay. so where do we go from here? Okay, so we've got the profit of the original monopolist, we've got his price and we've got his quantity. So just as a quick review, the Silas postulate, if I draw this original monopoly, and this would be an MR, and this is demand, quantity, price, marginal cost is that we're going to cut the market off 
So the original monopolist is operating at this quantity here, which we've already established is 20. Okay, and we want to stack the deck against any potential entrance, so we're going to say that none of the people buying from the first monopolist are going to change their behavior. All right, so what that amounts to is from the second monopolist, or second from the entrance perspective, we solve the monopoly again using only the part of the demand curve to the right of this big vertical line I've just drawn. Okay, so these first 20 people aren't going to change what they're doing. And it's only the people that are not being serviced by the market currently that are going to buy from monopolist number two. Okay, so he's got his own marginal revenue, which I'm going to label MR2, and some different, in this case it's a different marginal cost, sometimes it's the same marginal cost. And so this is our new Q of zero for monopolist two. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little sense. If you uh, look at your notes, you should have a much better picture drawing than I've just offered, but that's the basic intuition of what we're doing. Okay, so the thing we're looking for, this, this demand curve that starts here, is called residual demand. Okay, and it's super easy to find residual demand because you're working with the same demand curve. Okay, so if our original demand... We have 30 minus Q over 4. The only thing that's changed, right, this slope is still the same, so the only thing that's changed is the intercept. And the intercept takes over from the maximum willingness to pay of people who aren't in the market, which just happens to be this price right here. So residual demand is not going to be 25 minus the same slope, minus Q over 4. Okay, so all you have to do is take the original maximum willingness to pay and substitute for the price that the original monopolist is charging, and that will give you residual demand. That's all there is to it. It doesn't get more simple than that if you know what to do. Okay, so with our residual demand of 25 minus Q over 4, I'm going to come back to, I'm going to take a new page and start with our new marginal cost and solve the problem and give some advice to my friend. So my demand P equals 25 minus Q over 4 MC equals Q minus 14. Okay. So um, Again, same solution, doing the same thing to solve for a monopoly, right? So revenue is 25Q minus Q squared over 4. Marginal revenue is 25 minus 1 half Q. Okay, again, set that equal to marginal cost. Q minus 14 equals 25 minus 1 half Q. 1.5 Q equals 39, which means that Q equals 26. Okay, so good news, we got a positive quantity. Um, now we just want to check that that quantity is associated with a positive profit. Or in this case, since we don't know fixed cost, we want to make sure that we give our friend the advice that if his fixed cost is above a certain amount, then he should not enter the market. Okay, so let's set up a profit function for our friend here. Okay, so we know that his optimal quantity based on his marginal cost is 26. Okay, so that's quantity. Now let's multiply by price. So price is 25 minus 26 over 4. So his price is 18.50. Okay, so that's his revenue. Now we have to subtract his cost. And this is where the hint that the integral of marginal cost was 1 over 2 Q 
squared minus 14 q plus, and the constant in this case that we're working with is fixed cost. Okay, so we also know q, right? q is 26, so I'm going to go ahead and erase these and plug in 26. And I'm also going to work out that 26 squared is 676. Okay. Now, what should be the turning point for our friend? What's going to make him decide not to enter the market? Right? Well, if his profit is negative, then he doesn't want to enter the market. So we're going to set pi equal to 0. And I can't stress enough to understand why you're setting things equal to 0. This is not because we've taken a derivative and are looking for the minimum value of this function. This is because we want the point where fixed cost is just exactly offset by the amount of profit on each unit. Okay, so if you have set something equal to zero in a test, know why you're doing it. That is like my number one pet peeve when I'm grading stuff. Okay, so zero equals 26 times 18.5. Sorry, I'm just doing all these calculations. 81 minus one half times 676 is 338 plus well minus a minus so plus 14 times 26 is 364 minus fixed cost so you can see what I've got here is a bunch of numbers and something I don't know looks good right so 0 equals 507 minus fixed cost. So fixed cost equals 507. Okay, so don't say, now we have to think about this, right? So we've got an answer, so let's think about it. That's another thing you should be doing on a test. So I've come up with fixed cost equals 507. Okay, now does that mean that I should advise my friend to only go into business if fixed cost is exactly equal to 507? No because 507 right, is the maximum value of fixed cost that we're willing to accept before profits go into negative, right? So if fixed cost is less than 507, right, then profits are greater than zero, and that's okay too. So tell friend to open store if FC is less than or equal to 507. Okay? By the Silas postulate. Right, you could make some argument based on a Cournot model or a Bertrand model that would give you a similar answer but possibly different. And But I asked you one of the hints was to use the Silas postulate because that's what I'm seeking to get you to learn with this. So anyways, that's how to do that type of problem. Uh, another way to do this type of problem is that you're given what fixed costs are. You compute exactly the same thing, only you know this. And if profits are less than zero, then it is a natural monopoly. If profits are greater than or equal to zero, then it is not a natural monopoly. Okay, so that should all be in your notes. And thank you for your attention.